In this Take Corner video, I'm going to give you a basic overview of quality of light and talk about hard light versus soft light and diffuse light versus specular light. Light modifiers come in a variety of shapes and sizes, so when you first get into photography it can be quite overwhelming as to what you actually need. Stay tuned to the end where I will give you my recommendation on a modifier every photographer should own. This modifier has so many uses, I own three of these. But in this video I'm going to give you a basic overview of why we need modifiers and how the most common modifiers work in terms of light quality. In my In Studio series of videos, I will cover each modifier in more detail including how and when to use them on a real photo shoot. So to start with, why do we need modifiers at all? Unless you're working with large LED panels, lights in general are point source, meaning there is a small point, the globe, that the light is coming from. A small light source relative to your subject will give you hard light. Hard light is basically a light that is very contrasty with hard shadows. Contrast can be reduced with fill light, but clearly defined shadows are the result of a small light source or hard light. At the opposite end we have very soft light, where the transition from highlight to shadow is so gradual that you can't see where one ends and the other starts. Of course, you can take it too far and end up with a very clinical looking image, unless that's the look you're after. So how hard or soft a light needs to be entirely comes down to the look you're going for. So how do we get soft light? With a large light source. The larger the light source in relation to your subject, the softer the light. A common misconception is that it is the diffuser that makes the light soft. That is completely false. A diffuser scatters light, it does not soften light. I will cover diffusers a little later in the video, but the only way to make a light soft is to make it big. As a side note, for the remainder of this video, whenever I refer to the size of the light, it is always in relation to the subject. This means that as you place the light further away, it gets smaller in relation to your subject. This is why you can cover the sun with your hand, even though the sun is over a million times bigger than the earth, and why the sun casts such hard shadows just like a point source despite its large physical size. So how do we change the size of our lights? With a modifier. A modifier is technically anything that the light can reflect of or go through. So the most basic modifier you will have access to is a wall or ceiling of the room you're in. Instead of pointing a flash directly at your subject, point the flash at the ceiling or wall instead. This will make the wall or ceiling the new light source since that is what the light is bouncing off and since the wall or ceiling is much larger than your subject, you get much softer and more pleasing light. One thing to be aware of if you are going to use this technique is consider the colour of the walls. The reflected light will pick up the colour of the surface it is bouncing from which could result in a weird colour cast which is why ceilings are a great option since they are often white. Also, consider the distance you are from the wall or ceiling as the inverse square law will come into play in terms of exposure. If you want to learn more about the inverse square law, I will leave a link in the description below. So how do you decide between hard or soft light? In general, hard light gives shape and definition. In portraits, it defines jawlines and cheekbones. In products, it brings out shapes and contours. Hard light also brings out details in fabrics and textures. Keep in mind that hard light will also bring out all the textures in skin, which in some cases works to your advantage, and in some cases it doesn't. Soft light is generally used to fill shadows, which reduces contrast and softens textures. So next time you have someone self-conscious about their skin, just use a large light source. Once all the shadows are filled in, textures fade away. Soft light is generally used in lifestyle and beauty photography to give it a natural look. And yes, flash photography can give you natural looking images as you can see from these examples. Once you get the hang of soft and hard light, the key is to use a combination of both for standout photos. In this example, our model is lit with a beauty dish to give us a dramatic but not over the top hard light. However, the bars and wire in the window is lit with a small speed light from the outside to bring out all the texture in the metal. 
In this example, the entire scene is lit with a softbox to give it a lit by streetlights feel and the black sharp shadow is again from a small speed light off to the side. So hopefully by now you have a fairly good understanding of hard light and soft light. So let's now have a quick look at diffused and specular light. All photography modifiers are either matte white or metallic. Matte white is generally a white reflector, white shoot through umbrella, the diffuser on the front of a softbox, the middle of a 5-in-1 reflector or the white wall in your house. Matte white will give your light a diffused look. As I mentioned earlier, all a diffuser does is scatter light. By diffusing your light, you are able to control your light on shiny or reflective surfaces. This is handy if you are photographing someone with oily or sweaty skin or if you are photographing anything chrome or metallic. In these circumstances, a diffuser will even out all the reflections making them far less harsh. On the flip side, a metallic reflector such as a silver or gold in a 5-in-1, a silver bounce umbrella or a softbox without diffusion will give you specular light. Specular light makes shiny things more shiny, but it also adds more punch to non-shiny objects. Generally, specular lights are used in fashion, beach and swimwear shoots where you want the subject to pop. In this example, a specular light was used on our model and you can see how she pops away from the background. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of specular and diffused light. Hopefully you can see the difference as to which is which, but here are some labels just to avoid confusion. Just like soft and hard light, specular and diffused also has their place, and which you use will entirely on what you're photographing. Keep in mind you can mix diffused and specular light in the one image, just like you can with soft and hard light. So hopefully this video has helped you understand the different qualities of light, when to use them, and when to avoid them. I will be bringing out a series of videos on how to use specific modifiers, so make sure you're subscribed and have pressed the bell notification icon so you get an alert when the videos come out. So if you're just starting out in photography and not sure what modifier to get first, I highly recommend a 5-in-1 reflector. These are cheap, easy to take with you, can be used with natural light and flash, and it will give you diffused and specular light options. In my opinion, it is by far the most universal modifier every photographer should own and I will leave a link in the description below where you can purchase one if you don't already have one. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and see you again soon.